Welcome to this short video tutorial. The aim is to well-verse the students of different streams with fundamental aspects of seed structure, seed development, germination, and related questions. Our target group this time is the students having nursery and gardening as a generic elective. So we will be starting with the definition to understand the seed, to understand the seed structure, so its development, and also its germination. First of all, let's understand what we mean by the definition of the seed, how we can define the seed. Seed is a miniature of a plant body. Technically, we can see is a fertilized and a ripened ovule. In short term, we can say seed is a mature ovule. And if it is fertilized and ripened ovule containing an embryonic plant enclosed by a protective seed coat, so that means it is developed after the fertilization. In angiosperms, we have a special type of fertilization that's called as a double fertilization. Where two gametes are fertilizing, the two male gametes are fertilizing the female. And it's developed in the embryo sac of the ovule in ovary of an angiospermic flower. So if we have in angiosperms, seeds always confined within the fruit. That's why we say seed is a miniature of a plant body because it is the future, future plant. Before we will understand what is the structure of the seed, we'll have to understand how it is developed. It can be seen with this simple diagram, which in a way covers the life cycle of an angiosperm. As a student of sinus, you are well versed with the structure of a flower, flower which is the end of the vegetative phase and the beginning of a reproductive phase. Flower has a whorls. This is called as a pedicel. The stalk of the flower, this is called as the sepal. This is called as the petal. These are the androecium. This is the gynoecium. So we call them as calyx, corolla, androecium, and gynaecium. Two things are taking place in this in the flower. The two processes are going simultaneously. One is that the male part, which is called as the androecium, and the female part, which is called as the gynaecium, two developments are taking place there. In anthers, there is a formation of the pollen grains, and in case of the in case of gynaecium there is a formation of an embryo sac. So we will see male part as you know has a stamen and the anthers which are in the form of anther lobes. Within these anther lobes at the time of the maturity there is a development a process going on there which is called as a microsporogenesis. You might have observed often when you touch the flower at one point of time you will find your fingers will get stick to a yellow color of a poultry substance. Those are called as the pollens. So basically the pollens are formed here within these anthers through a process which is called as microsporogenesis from microspore mother cells which are diploid cells. They will undergo, they are, they are, they are formed after the meiosis. They will undergo a division, two cells and four cells are formed there which is called as the microsupport tetrad. And once they are segregated, each develops into a pollen grain. So pollen grain is formed from microsupport tetrads. Each, each cell becomes a pollen grain and pollen grain has its own texture, but technically it has a nucleus which gets divided and there is a formation of the two cells one is called as the generative cell and another is called as the tube cell. 
But ultimately, the generative cell divides, its nucleus divides into two, and it will form the two gametes. And the tube cell elongates. As a result, there is formation of a tube. Within the tube, there are present the two gametes. So that means there is a formation of a pollen grain, which when comes out at this point of time, having these two gametes, it falls on the female part, which is called as the gynoecium. That is the central part. It can be taken to this point through any pollinating mechanisms, either through insects or through wind or any means. Now, at the time of the pollen falling on this, the process inside is going on. That is within the gynoecium. It has an ovary. It has a style. It has a stigma. Within the ovary, there are present the ovule. There can be one ovule. There can be multiple of ovules which are which are connected on the placenta for the, through which the nourishment goes to these ovules. Remember that these future these ovules are the future seed, and there is an ovary wall also. In angiosperms, this ovule, which is formed basically from a, the ovule, technically has few features. First of all, it has a mass of cells here. That cell is called as the nucellus, and then it is surrounded by means of protective layers. They are called as the integuments. It has a one opening that's called as a micropyle end, and then the, the the other side of it that's called the chalazal end. So it has a micropyle face and the uh, and the and the chalazal chalazal end. So here this um, cell, which is called as the megaspore mother cell, which is present within the nucellus, will undergo Uh, division four cells will be formed there meiotic division four cells will be formed there as four cells were formed in in the pollen tetrad but out of the four cells three gets degenerated and one remains as a functional megaspore cell that megaspore cell divides twice its nucleus divides twice and and two cells are two nuclei are formed and then the two nuclei further divide mitotically four nuclei are formed and then four nuclei divide then eight nuclei are formed four on one side and four on another side and then what happens there out of these four and out of these four one each move towards the center from the poles they move towards the center they are called as the polar nuclei and the three remains on micropylar end and the three remains on the chalazal end so these three out of them one is as a egg cell and the two or it is helping cells which are also named as the synergids while as on the lower side there remains the three cells which are the nutritive cells they are called as the antipodal cells so the situation here is when the pollen grain falls on this it has a pollen grain which develops into a pollen tube pushing its gametes and trying to reach through a micropylar end towards this embryo sac the embryo sac which has an egg cell which has a polar nuclei two polar nuclei together antipodal cells and here there are two gametes are present since two gametes are present there what will happen here here will be a fertilization that fertilization is unique to the angiosperms that's called as the double fertilization where one gamete will fertilize the egg and the another gamete will cause the fertilization of the 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 polar nuclei uh, as a result it's already having the two nuclei there will be triploid and here is the zygote formation the the egg nucleus after fertilization is transformed into a zygote while as the the endosperm is formed from this which is a triploid cell and which will develop into a triploid endosperm nucleus and then the further process is taking place the zygote will divide further which will form an embryo while as these cells will divide they will form the endosperm the endosperm will serve as a nutritive nutritive or the nourishment layers for the developing embryo and the embryo develops and now the the, the whole ovule is to be transformed into a seed the outer integuments will serve as a seed coat while as the internal this this uh, zygote will get transformed into an embryo and 
there will be the different uh, features which we will see in the next slides that you will see the features which were present in the ovule will be seen as a part of the seed also and then this seed is a future plant which will form the young plant and the cycle continues and there will be the formation of the uh, vegetative phase and then the reproductive phase and the cycle will continue but here I have given you some idea that how a seed is basically formed in an angiosperm and there is a unique process which is called as the double fertilization as I mentioned here the pollen tube is coming with the two generative uh, nucleus and the tube nucleus and the two nuclei are coming here they are fertilizing the egg as well as the uh, polar nuclei uh, which is uh, at the center and the two processes are taking place the fertilization of this fertilization of this this is called as the double fertilization but here you will see how there is a development of an embryo that is called as the embryogenesis as we have seen there is a f the, the, the first egg is uh, getting fertilized and it will then divide it will form the two cell stage and then there will be an octant eight cell stage there will be a globular that is there will be a basal cell and a apical cell first it is one cell the two cells are formed the basal cell will form the suspensor cell and the apical cell will form the octant that will be the embryo proper and this will go on dividing and so that the embryo is going down into the seed endosperm globular stage will be formed there triangular stage will be formed there this is the suspensor and then there can be a hot shaped uh, formation and there is a torpedo like structure and ultimately the mature embryo is formed so that is how within this structure these processes are going on in the stepwise manner as a result these stages you will see here it's a globular stage here it's an uh, this uh, hot shaped stage and then uh, the torpedo stage and ultimately there is a formation of a mature embryo the mature embryo which has a shoot apical meristem which has a root apical meristem and there is also present the a hypocotyle epicotyle and the two cotyledons and also the reserved food material that food material can be an endosperm so that is how embryogenesis is taking place that's why we say the seed is a fertilized uh, this uh, egg which is present within the ovule and you have a monocot as well as the dicot there depending upon the number of the cotyledons present there so this is how embryogenesis has been seen taking place in the dicot seeds so once this is formed here the growth of embryo and endosperm stops seed becomes dormant by gradual loss of moisture because in angiosperms you have a uniqueness that uniqueness is that within the ovary ovules are transformed into seed but at the same time the ovary wall is converted into a fruit and so once seeds are present within the fruit and there can be a ripening or the drying of the fruits and at that time the seed which is present within the within the ovary is uh, turning into a maturation stage and it can undergo dormancy we will see it later on but here this is how a uh, uh, ovule is transformed that is this is the embryo sac this is the uh, the overall cotyledons these these are the polymule and the radical this is the suspensor cell and this is the basal cell and embryo sac is his which expands and some of the cells which were of the nucleus can remain there and this whole becomes as a seed so seed has cotyledons these, these will turn into cotyledons and there can be in uh, remains of the endosperm it will be uh, uh, there can be remains of endosperm or depending upon there will be endospermic or non endospermic seeds having said that seed is a mature ovule what are the different things which are from in the seed and which are basically formed from the ovule seed as i said is a fertilized mature ovule that possesses an embryo so embryo is present here that is formed here we have seen the development of a 
dicot embryo placenta with which it is attached will be variously modified either it can be, remain attached with it or it can become it can become uh, 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 with with more flesh there is the this uh, structure the stalk which is called the funicle funiculus becomes seed stalk future seed stalk and the integuments which are present there the integuments will become the seed coat and the nucellus which was present here uh, it can remain rarely it can be present that time it's called as the perisperm and micropyle will remain as a pore or the micropyle in case of the seed and the syner synergids which are present here which are called as the helping cells they will be lost they will be destroyed because they are helping for the development of the egg and then there will be an egg or the ovum that is this which is fertilized egg that will be the future embryo of the seed and the polar nuclei here after the double fertilization will be as an uh, this uh, embryo uh, will be uh, this polar polar nuclei will become as the endosperm so embryo plus endosperm that is this embryo plus this these polar cells which will become the endosperm occupy the larger volume of a seed and these antipodal cells usually disintegrates and there is also these because this is present within the ovary that ovary wall will become the future fruit as we are just giving the preliminary idea and the fundamentals we are clearing the fundamentals so let us see how the fruit formation is also taking place there parts of the flower that contribute to the fruit formation calyx which can be persistent it can be acrescent or uh, marcus marcescent or deciduous that it can remain there but ultimately with us or it can fall at the early stage corolla usually deciduous it falls androecium usually deciduous so it will fall the gynaecium uh, out of that the stigma usually with us often remnant may be present style with us but it is the ovary wall which will become the fruit wall and we have the true fruits where it can be the pericarp ovary wall will get developed into fleshy pericarp we can have is a generalized uh, structure here where we have uh, have flower here uh, that flower is having a uh, hypen hypanthium or it is having a receptacle which is here and the ovary is sunken within it within that ovary is present the ovule this is the gynoecium these are the sepals petals and these are the androecium so you have a situation here where there is a receptacle and this ovary is sunken within it so under that condition what will happen basically now we know this ovule becomes the seed and by double fertilization also the ovary wall or Uh, in case of the false fruits this uh, uh, receptacle will become fleshy so you have fleshy fruits uh, you can have dry fruits you can have fleshy fruits you can have false fruits true fruit is one which is developed from the ovary wall and the false fruit is one which is developed from the receptacle or hypanthenium uh, so we have here a situation where a fleshy fruit is here it can have this whole becomes the pericarp pericarp is often different this is the pericarp area which can be differentiated into outer is an exocarp and the middle portion is called the mesocarp and the inner is called as the endocarp and then is the formation of the seed so fleshy fruits can have a seed here and this whole will be the pericarp which will be differentiated into this and in case of apple you have a situation where it is basically formed not from the ovary it is formed from this receptacle sunken uh, this receptacle which becomes the which is also called as the hypanthium hypanthium is this hole which is now here the fleshy part of it and the ovary wall will be the pericarp portion that is the internal portion and then the seeds will be confined to it and the remnant of it here that will be the stigma 
as in case of the false fruits a rosaceous fruits as in, in the case of the apple so similarly you have you have a false fruit you have a fleshy fruits or in some cases you have a pericarp this and in case of tomato you have a pericarp and then it there is a placenta the placenta becomes fleshy and to it or attached the number of the ovules which becomes the future seeds while as this portion becomes as a pericarp and these are the sepals and this is basically the the stalk of the of this which becomes uh, basically the, uh, the 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 stalk which is funny uh, the stalk of the flower is here as a stalk of the fruit and here in case of uh, other fruits as uh, as uh, in in case of uh, berries where you will have a receptacle which will develop here into this and then pericarp is surrounded uh, the surrounds each seed in case of dry fruits and the outer portion in case of these uh, vegetables we are, in case of a pod is formed there that is a pericarp and these are basically the ovule and it is attached with the placenta and in case of uh, it's a generalized view we have given here basically uh, my idea was to to make you understand what we mean by the, the the false fruits and the true fruits here and since basically it is the transformation of the ovary the ovary which is transformed into a fruit and the fruit formed from the ovary wall is called as a true fruit and the, the fruit formed from the, the receptacle or from the hypanthium and that is called as the false fruit and then the ovary wall there becomes as a pericarp so this is how in case of angiosperms the double fertilization is helping in the seed formation as well as the fruit formation that's why we have a seed within the fruit as you see in case of the apple this is how the the apple uh, flower is rosaceous flower is here and then there is the sunken ovary there these are its ovules and this area will develop into the the fruit portion that's called as the hypanthium and then this becomes as a core portion which is the pericarp of the ovary wall and the seeds will be confined internally and this is the remnant of a stem and the style which is here in the fruit and this becomes the pedicel of the flower that is the pedicel of the the stalk of the fruit so this is how a false fruit looks like and is formed from there but here the question is not of the fruit formation basically we are discussing the seed formation here we'll have to see how the seeds are confined basically the ovule has got transformed into a seed and ovary wall in this case has developed into an apple core or which is called as the pericarp so receptacle or the hypanthium develops into a fleshy fruit which is fleshy fruit part and each seed when you see the seed seed has an embryo within it seed has a seed coat within it seed has a cotyledons within it and that seed portion can be seen here as in case of a bean this is how the seed is looking when you take out the seed coat that is called as the testa and then you find here the hilum is present here and there is also present a micropyle and and when you remove it you find here also an embryo which has a radical which has a pilumule and then this whole area is the cotyledon and the outer one is called as a testa or the seed coat in case of monocot you have a seed coat externally this tip cap is there and when you see the anatomy of the monocot seed you find that the seed coat has a fused with is fused with the ovary wall also and then it has here a structure that is more visible here there is present as a seed coat and the whole area is the endosperm there is a formation of a single cotyledon which is uh, present here and it has an epicotyle and then there is present the radical this whole area is the embryo but you will find a single cotyledon which is also called as the scutellum this layer is called as the epithelial layer and this whole is the endosperm layer so in case of monocot seeds as in case of maize you have an the single cotyledon and uh, the cotyledon is above the cot is the coleopetyl 
that's capping this and here is present the coleoriza and this is how monocot seed looks like there are some of the seeds which is uh, the bean seed as we have discussed it external features of the bean seed and the internal features of the bean seed anatomy of the bean seed similarly the bean seed has two cotyledons and no endosperm because it has cotyledons but the wheat seed has one cotyledon and endosperm so there is an endosperm hole there is one cotyledon the castor bean seed has the two cotyledons and an endosperm so there can be with cotyledons and endosperm or there can be the only uh, endospermic seeds so these are some of the seeds you will see their different colorations different pigmentations and different textures are present there so seed we have seen uh, what is the importance of a seed as you know the importance of the seed has an importance in propagation of new generation of species so is a reproductive uh, propagule which will help in the propagation of new generation of species and also is an important natural wealth and it sustains both plants and animal life used as a food and medicine and we extract a number of oils from it so as a seed it assures us the food security and what are the types of the seeds now broadly there are two types of the seeds one is endospermic seeds or they are called as albuminous seeds they have a reserved food material endosperm surrounding the immature embryo you know the endosperm endosperm is formed by double fertilization it fertilizes the the polar nuclei example is maize castor wheat barley and grasses non endospermic seeds are called as the ex albuminous seeds they have a reserved food stored in cotyledons beans almond groundnut besides food material seeds contain embryo and embryo is comprised of radical and pilumule radical elongates gives rise to primary root and pilumule elongates to produce aerial shoot so we have two types one is called as the endospermic seeds and another is the non endospermic seeds and broadly we have a monocot and a dicot seed as we have already seen in the earlier slide monocotyledons contains one cotyledon the main example is the corn on which is a maize seed or which is a, a, a corn which is a monocot seed and this is the external pericorp it has an aileron layer it has an endosperm here and then there is the cotyledon that cotyledon is called as the scutellum and it has an out, outer covering of the uh, this that's called the coleopetal and the root is covered by the coleoriza and then there is an embryonic leaf and so here are present the epithelial cells also pilumule is present there radical is present there radical is surrounded by coleoriza and the pilumule is surrounded by the coleopetal in case of uh, dicot seeds as it has an uh, micropyle and the hilum portion here and is surrounded by means of the seed coat and it has two segments equal halves they are called the cotyledons and then there is present an embryo axis the embryonic shoot which has an embryonic leaves within it and which will be having the root as well as the shoot and then there are present the two cotyledons surrounded by means of the seed coat so monocot and dicot seeds are present there we have seen so far that how the seed is basically formed basically in case of the angiosperms how it is formed and now let us see how the seeds because we have already seen the different methods of uh, seed sowing and then the seed has to germinate and that seed germination is the process of reactivation of metabolic machinery because seed can be a dormant but it has to undergo the reactivation of metabolic machinery of the seed and the emergence of radical and pilumule leading to formation of seedling is called as a seed germination in physiological terms seed germination begins with insertion of biochemical reactivation and ends with the emergence of the radical so it's a process of reactivation it's it only takes when you take the seed to the soil and Uh, the, under certain conditions uh, providing the favorable uh, conditions uh, hydration and other things it starts germination so on the basis of their germination two types rather three types of the germination are present there one is called as the hypogeal germination 
This is on the basis of whether the cotyledon will remain underground or the cotyledon will come above the ground. Hypogeal as a term means below ground. That means cotyledon sit below the soil surface. Is a common experience when you see uh, you are sowing a bean seed, you are seeing a sowing a pea seed or the gram seed, you see the difference there. Or you are sowing the maize seed. Hypogeal means where the cotyledon sit, sit below the soil surface. See, above the cotyledon, that is below the cotyledon, there is present in hypocotyl region. Above the cotyledon, there is present in epicotyl region. But here, hypocotyl does not raise the cotyledons above the ground. That's why cotyledons will remain below the ground. Hypocotyl below the cotyledons remain same in length. So there is no increase in the length. As a result, the cotyledons are not uplifted from the soil surface. And, but epicotyl elongates. That is the area which is above the cotyledons. Epicotyl elongates that takes the pilimule away which develops into a future, sh future shoot. Epicotyl elongates becomes curved, brings pilimule above the soil surface and plant develops basically is a survival strategy for the plant because the cotyledons are within the soil they will be resistant to cold and grazing because that is that remains underground it is resistant to flooding but plants grow relatively slower some of the examples where this type of the germination hypogeal i think you understand it because hypogeal means the the cotyledons remain below the soil and it is as a survival strategy also for these uh, for these seeds. Example maize, pea, mango, gram, custard, apple and lotus. These are the, the, the types of the germination which these uh, seeds are experiencing. As you will see here the hypogeal germination suppose it is in case of the pea, this is in case of the maize, you'll see the cotyledons remain below and the hypocotyl which is here that will not grow up that remains as it is only the cotyledons remain within the soil it is the hypocotyl area which will go up and will get curved upwards and will lift the pilimule side towards the aerial side and the cotyledon remains there which gives the reserved food material to this developing uh, new uh, pilimule and the hypocotyl remains as it is it remains short as a result the cotyledons or remained within the soil that's why it is called as the hypogeal germination and the epicotyl which leads the pilimule up and forms the aerial foliage as you will see in case of the uh, this maize seed also the situation remains the cotyledons are below hypocotyl does not elongate and the hypocotyl remains short as a result the cotyledon remains downwards and the coleopetyl comes up and then the epicotyl comes up that takes the first leaf leads to the formation of the first leaf so this germination is called as the hypogeal germination as we have experienced it in case of p as well as in case of the maize then comes the next germination that's called the epigeal germination that's above the surface the cotyledons are above the surface soil surface hypocotyl elongates very rapidly and cotyledons raise it above the soil it is reverse of the hypogeal here the cotyledons are raised above the soil and epicotyl remains unchanged in length plants with epigeal germination are vulnerable to grazing because they are taking their cotyledons above if there is a grazing their reserved food material is gone while in case of the hypogeal the reserved food material remains underground and there can be an adverse weather conditions also so as an evolutionary strategy plants produce lower seed output these types of the plants they produce lower seed outputs because in nature they have to survive and plants grow faster examples include bean cotton castor these are the some of the uh, germinations which are experienced uh, in these plants which is called as the epigeal type of the germination so we have an epigeal germination as the the seed is grown below the surface of the soil but hypocotyl elongates and it takes curved and takes the the cotyledons above the cotyledon are above and then the epicotyl remains short the first leaves are formed 
these cotyledons give the reserved for material and they get they get degenerated and they get uh, skeezed and ultimately the new leaves are formed there this is how the the process of epigeal germination is taking place in case of the in case of beans dicots so we have an epigeal type of germination here where the uh, this uh, epicotyl remains the same but the hypocotyl is bringing the cotyledons above the soil in case of the hypogeal germination the hypocotyl remains short and there that is here and there is the formation of the first leaf which comes above in case of in case of corm in case of p also we have experienced the same that the cotyledons remain below the surface of the soil only the foliage is coming above so we have seen the epigeal and the hypogeal types of the germination in different types of the plants there is one more type which is called as the specializer type of a germination that's called as the precocious germination or uh, viviparae this viviparae is uh, in in case of it's also called the in situ germination within the fruit that is the fruit has a seed and the seed starts a germination so while it's attached to the mother plant it's noticed in number of the mangrove plants example rhizopora soneritia and cocodet and due to marshy habitat see in case of plants especially in case of the rhizopora they they are growing in the marshy habitats and seeds of these plants cannot germinate due to lack of oxygen and presence of saline conditions and first of all once they are on the mother plant they develop the radical radical appears first and there is an hypocotyl that elongates and becomes heavy so once the radical comes out hypocotyl elongates that becomes heavy and it break away and falls down in a parabolic fashion radical gets fixed in the mud and plumule away from the saline water and seedling develops into a new plant so we'll see here how it's happening basically so you have a plant which is attached uh, a seed which is attached to the mother plant is settle in the fruit but only what comes here from the fruit there is a formation of a radical and that radical grows more and more downwards becomes heavier and settle it's attached with the branch once the radical becomes heavier and it gets detached from the branch and it falls in the parabolic manner and get stuck in the mud where it radical develops the roots and the hypocotyl which is elongated and the epicotyl then forms the leaves and that's why this is how the the fruit looks like this is the fruit part of this is the radical of it and once it will be detached from it it will get attached with the soil as a result the plant which is a mangrove plant will successfully develop from a seed otherwise it has an harsh uh, habitat available where due to lack of oxygen and uh, due to uh, due to presence of saline conditions the seed would not germinate so i think in this lecture we have seen our aim was to understand how the seed is formed what are the various processes uh, by which the seed uh, is developed from an ovule and how the ovary wall is converted into a fruit i think we have understood the basic the fundamentals of uh, a seed structure development ger and germination in future video we will see the the other parts other aspects of it that will cover the dormancy the reasons of the dormancy factors causing the dormancy and then also we will understand how to break up the dormancy uh, if you have understood this well uh in case of the suggestions you can subscribe to the green treasure uh, till the next video is uh, uploaded thank you thank you very much for the patient listening